Hi YouTube, how's it going? My name is Mike, and I'm back doing uh, another in my series of movies from A to Z. And now I'm up to the letter Y, so I'm next to the last in this series. And I've chosen a German film from 1966 called Young Torless. Young Torless, directed by Volker Schlondorf, and it was his first feature film. Based on a novel that was published in 1906, a novel by a man named Robert Musil, and I guess he wrote it when he was still in college. The, the title of the, the novel was The Confusions of Young Torless. And I guess, I've never read the novel, I, I'd like to read it now, but I guess the novel was quite different than um, what they depicted in the film. But I, I highly recommend this to you. This is a very, very well-made film. I can't say that it's enjoyable. It's actually very hard to watch. But it, it is an excellent film for people who want to be, um, well, challenged, I guess. And it's also put out by the Criterion Collection, which guarantees that it's a very good print and it has some interesting extra features, okay? Now, I never heard about this film until the late 1970s. And I, I read about it in an article about my favorite actress, Barbara Steele. I found out that she had a supporting role in this German film. And it was one of the last films that she did in her European film career before she left and came back to the United States. So I was very interested in seeing her for that reason. And I remember I went up to Chicago, I think it was around 1980 or something, I found out that this film was going to be playing at Columbia College for one night only. So I took a night off work, drove up to Chicago, which is about a two and a half hour drive, in a blinding rainstorm just to see this movie. And uh, I was very impressed by it. So it's always it's always meant a lot to me, and I'm very glad that it came out in uh, in uh, DVD. I also have a, a VHS tape, which I forgot to bring down to show you, but I still have that. Anyway, the film is about uh, a sort of a military boys boarding school in the somewhere in the hinterlands of Austria in the early 1900s, and Torlis is as a young kid that comes to the school and he's very sensitive and very impressionable and very confused about values and all sorts of things. He's also kind of a mathematical genius, mathematical freak who is mystified by the concept of uh, imaginary numbers and doesn't get any help at all when he goes to see one of his professors to try to understand this concept. The professor tells him that basically mathematics like anything else is all about feelings and that you have to have faith in these numbers that they really exist. Okay, so anyway, Torlis gets involved with a couple of um, guys there. They become friends, a guy named Beinberg and a guy named Writing, and they are much more kind of um, aggressive, you know, more 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 aggressive and, and less sensitive than Torlis is. And the plot of the story is that another student, a, a guy named Bassini, who is not terribly well liked by most of the people in the school. He's a little bit different, a little bit of an outcast. He has been found out by these boys that he has stolen some money. In fact, he stole some money from Beinberg in order to pay back writing. Bassini had a very bad habit of borrowing money and then he wasn't able to pay it back. So he stole from one guy, gave it to another, not knowing that they were close friends and that they were going to end up basically ganging up on him, okay? These guys, these three guys sit in judgment of Bassini and they try to decide what they're going to do about the fact that he stole this money. Torlis's idea is, well, why don't you just turn him into the, the superintendent of the school and then he'll get kicked out. That's what he deserves. But the other two guys decide that they want to punish him themselves and they decide to basically take charge of Bassini's life and they end up, th their treatment of him becomes more and more cruel, more and more calculated, and they end up torturing the kid. And they they also use him sexually. Now Torlis does not do that. He, he takes part in this more as a spectator than anything else. He is unable to do anything to stop it. He finds himself being fascinated by what's happening not necessarily excited by it, but just interested in some sort of a, a intellectual way, trying to understand it, the nature of good and evil, and why Bassini would allow himself to be 
debased in this manner and how just exactly how far it could go. Uh, the other two guys are just basically trying to understand, they're trying to see just how far they can go in being cruel and being in control of another human being. So for them, it's kind of, a, it's also in a way an intellectual exercise, but also an exercise in just brute power. And I'm probably not explaining it very well, but what happens is that Torlis eventually decides that he, he can't, he can't take part in it anymore, even as a spectator. And he tries to get Bassini to, to just turn himself in so that this will end, which makes the other two guys turn against Torlis. Not that they start torturing him, but they threaten to torture him. And uh, of course, the the whole thing is wrapped up in um, the, the notion of brute power, um, certain people being less than human. At, at one point, Weinberg even says that he wants to try to remove Bassini's soul by hypnotizing him and doing physical torture to him while he's under hypnosis. He actually wants to take the guy's soul away. It, it, it's very allegorical and a, a lot of people have interpreted this film as being kind of a premonition of what would happen a few decades later in, in Germany when the Nazis began to take over and they began the systematic um, dehumanization and extermination of so many people, you know, 12, nearly, nearly 12 million people executed by the Nazis, specifically the Jews who were, who were looked upon as being basically something less than human. And um, not coincidentally, in the novel, I guess that um, Bassini is is Jewish, although it's not actually said that in the not actually said in the film that that he is Jewish. Now, Schlondorf um, he used a, a professional actor, a guy named Matthew Carrier, to play Torlis. But the the other three guys who are the the principal teenagers in this film were not professional actors. Marion Sadowski played Bassini. He had a couple of other credits. After this, uh, maybe two, three other films in the 70s, he died very young at the age of 29. He committed suicide when he found out that he had cancer. I just read that on the IMDb tonight. The other two guys, um, Weinberg was played by an actor named uh, Bernd Tisch, not pronouncing that very well, and uh, writing was played by a guy named Fred Dietz. They, uh, they have, um, uh, Tisch had no other credits, Dietz had maybe one or two, and I think the only other professional actor in the film was Barbara Steele, who who uh, was someone she knew Schlondorf as a personal friend, and he asked her to play in the film. He had already done that. He had already tried filming it with with a couple of other actresses and didn't like what they presented to the characters, so he asked her to do it, and he liked he liked her part, so he so he kept it in the film. Um, I guess Schlondorf found these these other these other guys playing in the film by just basically going into the streets of Germany and he wanted to find realism so he went to I guess he went to a boys school and he found these guys and found Marion Sadowski who in a way was kind of like the character he was playing in the film Bassini he was somebody who was a little bit of an outcast he was subject to bullying and uh, yeah but they all give very, very believable and impressive performances. Now, as far as Barbara Steele's performance, she plays the village prostitute. Her name is Bozena, B-O-Z-E-N-A. And her part in the film is not, it doesn't take that long, really. She, she's in an extended scene close to the beginning of the film when Torlis and Beinberg go to visit her and spend the night with her. And then she's briefly in it at the end of the film as well. Um, but she she plays this role of a village prostitute that the boys are basically just going to use for sex and she is looked upon by them as being you know like a lower class person but and, and in the hands of a lot of actresses this could have been um almost like a one-dimensional character a lot of actresses would have just played this woman as being just 100 percent provocative and 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 nothing else, no more. But Barbara gives it a three-dimensional aspect. She she is certainly very seductive and very beautiful, but she is also very vulnerable to these guys. She makes it, by the way she acts with these guys, it's plain that she likes the sexual power she has over them, 
but she also likes the way they make her feel. And she's very obvious about the fact that she is turned on by them and she she likes them. She likes what they do to her. And uh, she also, the dialogue that she has with the guys, basically she in this scene that she's in with these two characters, she's basically giving a long speech, which for a lot of actors, that's kind of like a suicidal thing because it, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of motivation and a lot of uh, nuance to make a long speech presentable. And I think she does a very good job because what she does is establish the hypocrisy of these upper class boys who are coming to her and wanting to be with her sexually, but looking down on her as a person. And she says that you are just like your, you're just like your parents, you're hypocrites. And Torless is not, he, he's listening to every word she says and he's being very much moved by it, although he doesn't say anything. The other guy, Weinberg, is just leering at her and uh, just totally not listening to anything she's saying. He's just looking at her as an object and she allows that to happen. But at the same time, she is telling him what a hypocrite he is. It's a very good performance and and she has said in many interviews that's one of her favorite performances of anything that she's ever done. So um, anyway, I guess that's all I want to say really. The, as I said in, in the beginning, this is not necessarily an enjoyable film. It's actually very hard to watch in, in some places because they do they do torture this guy. Now the torture sometimes gets very graphic. The, the, uh, the, the sexual activity that Weinberg and writing have with uh, Bassini is certainly not depicted. This was 1966, but they it's alluded to in the conversations between all the three boys. And um, so there is that aspect of it too. It's a very powerful film. It's certainly well acted and it, 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 it's in black and white. It has a very, um, very stark, very gray look to everything. Uh, it, it shows the, the, the interiors where these boys live and where they go to school, it's, it's all very closed in and claustrophobic and kind of, it, it's symbolic of the closed in uh, and very empty intellectual environment that they're in, the, the intellectual uh, thought processes that they are, they are given to explore are very, very small, very, very closed in and, and not at all, not at all expansive and uh, open to real you know, thought and philosophy. And I, I'm babbling like a fool here. Anyway, Young Torless, highly recommended. So um, give it a try and I'll be back with letter Z and I'll be done with this series. Okay. Thanks for watching folks. Comments are welcome.